Hello guys, my name is Troy. Welcome back to my channel and to day three of Book Miss. I am having a lot, lot, lot of fun with this already. And today I'm going to be doing a mid-month wrap up because I've already read a lot of books this month. So guys, I forgot to do it yesterday, but we've got myself a little hot chocolate. I don't know if y'all can see that. I don't want to spill it, but yeah, you can see it. There you go. Also, guys, I want to announce that I'm going to be going live tomorrow from 4.15 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So the other time zones will be listed above. And if you have any questions, just let me know and I'll see if I can solve your time zone questions. Um, it'll be here on my channel and it's going to be super, super fun. It'll probably be like holiday themed Q&A kind of style and what to expect. I always have my chat room open 30 minutes before where you guys will chat with me. Then I'll go live and we'll do a Q&A. It's a lot of fun always. And I just... I, I really appreciate everyone who comes out. So I hope you guys are able to come tomorrow to the live show. Anyways, what I wanted to say is that I have read 12 books, I think, this month. That's like a really, really good ratio. I'm gonna see if I can get to 20 books this month and that's a good goal. Let's just get started. I'm gonna talk all about the books that I read this month. Make sure to leave a like if you have been liking these book miss things and subscribe to my channel down below for more content and hit the notification bell for more. <laughs> Okay, let's just get started. The first big book nest thingies are Wings of Fire books. I have read a lot of Wings of Fire books this month, and it was like kind of the first thing that I wanted to read. So I've read book five, I've read book six, book seven, book eight book nine and book 10. I read that as well on ebook. So we're, we're just going to talk about them. First up, we have to talk about book number five in the Wings of Fire series, which is The Brightest Night. And this is the ending of the first series. So basically how um, Sutherland does it. Splits up the series in five. So, so the first arc of the series is the first five books and the second arc is the second um, five books. And then she's working on her third arc right now with the, the 10 through 15. So basically this is the last book in the first arc. I didn't enjoy as much as I loved because I really like the second arc better but I think that this was a fine book I liked the main character Sunny I liked diving into hers and some of the twists and turns in this were actually really good so definitely loved this book next I think we're gonna go to my favorite book in the series which is Moon Rising which is the sixth book in the Wings of Fire series and this was just incredible like the new characters the new arc the beginning of like the new prophecy um the Jade Mountain prophecy which is the second arc I just loved everything about this honestly it just was so good it was like a murder mystery almost and it just had those vibes had those cozy dragon vibes and like I was just like in for the ride it was so good next up we have got winter turning which is book number seven I'm pretty sure and this is um another really really good one I loved hearing winter's character and I loved the whole ice wing um culture and like getting to explore that and I loved like the furtherment of the the, like the jade mountain prophecy and stuff and kind of dealing with like queen scarlet a little bit and getting into her like arc escaping peril probably my least favorite in the second arc of the series but it was still really really good i loved exploring the sky wings more and i liked peril's character as much as i didn't like her character at the start i feel like i kind of like grew to her and i just kind of you know, really loved her at the end. I just loved some of like the little twists with the magic bits and the fantasy elements. It was really, really cool. Then we've got Talons of Power, which honestly switched up everything in the series. It turned it and we really started getting into the prophecy bit and kind of like more of the magic and just dealing with like a lot of the animus stuff. Like in the first series, we didn't really go too deep into the animus powers and the more elemental magic. There's a lot of more new magical properties introduced in this book, which I love. And then last up, we have got the the number 10 which I read on ebook because I didn't really have any option else because I don't know if I was gonna be able to get it from the library or something I tried to get it from the library but it didn't work so I had to get it on ebook on the library and it was actually not that bad it wasn't a bad experience it felt like it was taking longer for me which I mean, I would rather read a physical book because it just, I, I feel like I'm able to fly through them quicker, but overall the ebook experience was fine. The book itself, I actually really, really liked it. Probably wasn't good as the previous one, but I love the more Sandwing exploration, although the Sandwings are probably my least favorite tribe. I think that the ending was really really cool i like the epilogue and i'm so excited how it teased at the ending the new arc and i'm trying to read the new arc whenever it's going to come get here i will be gladly able to read and just devour the last three books in the series that there are so far so yeah that is my wings of fire series conclusion 
for now. Next up, I've got The Gravity of Us by Phil Stamper. And if you guys have not seen my The Gravity of Us reading vlog, which was a uh, collab with Suckerbin Books, you should definitely go click up there and watch it. It was so freaking fun. So I'm gonna do a quick recap. This series is, or this book is basically about a, um, it's like an LGBTQ plus romance between Cal and Leon um, when both their families get selected into this space program. And the main boy we're following, which is Cal, he has like a flash flame app and he has a lot of followers on it that's kind of the premise it was really really good um some of the social media aspects like i said before were super unrealistic like super 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 unrealistic now that i think about it i liked the romance though i liked the spacey kind of vibe like the sciencey vibe with the romance i just like a lot of the little more minor elements into it i thought it all just really came together well and it was a really good book that i would definitely recommend i think it's time for a hot chocolate break that tastes so good oh my gosh okay Anyways, next up we got Loot by Jude Watson, and this is a middle grade kind of like crime mystery series, which I really, really enjoyed. Basically, the premise of this is that Alfie's father, who's a criminal, like a really good mastermind of like stealing and heists and stuff, his father dies while on a mission, and basically he says to his son, find jewels. What he doesn't know is that he's going to get wrapped up into this crazy organization of trying to find all these diamonds across the globe and steal them before like in a certain amount of time, like a week. Like he has a week to find all these globes and return them for a total cash prize. And this was such a really fun adventure. I loved everything about this, honestly. It was just, um, the beginning was a little bit slow, I will say that, but I loved how it just picked up and then like their search for the diamonds and like the jewels and it got really actionful and like a little bit more tense, like as like some of their heists were like really like high stakes you know so i thought it was really fun exploring this book and i definitely recommend just again slow start and this is my first time finally finishing the book because i've tried it many times and i kept dnfing it <laughs> all right finally we've got an audiobook going slow on audiobooks this month we have got a torch against the night by saba tahir and this is the second book in the and ember in the ashes series and it wasn't as good as the first one like the first one was five stars the second one was 4.5 stars but i really really enjoyed it i loved continuing the characters seeing laia and and Elias, their kind of continuation, although some of the stuff was kind of sad and like made me emotional, I thought their adventure was really, really good. Um, I love the addition of Helene's perspective because she's an amazing character that we need more of. And so I'm glad that we now have three perspectives in the series. I thought that was such a great touch and just like the character's journey and the secrets and the twists, like all of this is really, really cool. And I love Sabatier's writing, but I really hope that the next two books are just a little bit better because I needed a little bit more kick to be like intrigued and to be interested in the series. But yeah, I love this book. Next up, we've got Matilda by Roald Dahl, and this was perfect. This was amazing. I finished it in like two days. It was like a four hour long audiobook. It was just a perfect like kind of cleanser. I love Roald Dahl's writing so much, and I love Matilda. I don't know if I've ever finished it though, because I forgot a lot of what happened. But basically, it's just about this like really stupendous girl who's just like amazing. She's like so gifted and so like smart and so talented, and we just get to see her travels like being like a literal child prodigy, like having to go through some like you know, mundane and normal and weird and unusual experiences. Like it's just, Roald Dahl always has a way to put a smile on my face. Like it, I literally was genuinely smiling like through some of the parts because it was some of it was relatable to me just being someone who also like was academically gifted in elementary school not so much now i'm definitely not academically gifted now but like in elementary school i was also excelled so seeing some of the relatability there but, and also it was just really humorous so i love this book so much all right last up for this mid-month wrap-up we have got the aragon world with the inheritance cycle and everything christopher Pellini. so yes honestly guys i think i deserve applause like set down your phone or whatever or whatever you're watching on and clap for me because I finished this beast of a book in less than a week. This was literally a prompt for the Reindeer Readathon of like the most intimidating book. This was the most intimidating book for me, like probably on all of my bookshelf. Look how small the, okay, wait, you can't even see the words. Look how small the words are. There's 850 pages. This took me over 15 hours of reading and I finished it in less than a week. Like this is insane that I finished this. Um, It's just the only, my only complaint about this series is that it's too long. Like each book is so long. I wish it was more split up. Um, and the content wise though this was an amazing book this actually might have been my favorite i always thought the second book was my favorite in the series but this reread taught me that i think this one's my favorite because just the amount of originality and even like christopher Pellini said like it probably took him like three years or something to write this book like he said that this was probably his like most favorite book like his most proud book that he's ever written like i just i feel like this was just amazing it was like a really hidden gem honestly and i feel like he just 
the twists and the turns and all of, like, the key elements were amazing. I think that there should have been a little bit more, like, downfall. Like, he was winning a lot. Like, Aragon was winning and winning and winning. He wasn't losing as much, so I feel like there should have been a little bit more deaths or a little bit more defeats. But overall, I really, really, really love this book, and I feel just so immersed in the world, and I'm so lucky to have found the series, honestly, and to have been recommended in middle school. So, yeah. The last step... I finished this like to whatever an hour before I filmed this or something. This is The Fork of the Witch and the Worm, which is the Tales from Agasia Volume 1, which we need more volumes. I don't know what Christopher Pellini is doing, but he, we need more volumes. And this is just basically a short novella after the ending of Inheritance. And if you guys have never read the series, the ending is really weird and really like depressing a little bit. Like it's not a sad ending. It was kind of what needed and I loved the ending. It was just a little bit sad. So, and a lot of stuff was open and stuff. So he had a way to like kind of dig deeper into the world with this little novella and I just really liked this. I thought it was so cute, funny, and um, and it was even cool seeing him being the artist of all this art in it too. Like he was the original artist of all the art with like the chapter headings and stuff. So yeah, I was just so enveloped in the inheritance world, the Aragon world this month. And honestly, these two books really gained my appreciation for the series and I cannot wait to reread them again. Like they may be long, but I just love this world too much and just all the creativity and originality and just everything like, oh my gosh, how did Christopher Pellini do it. I'm so jealous. But yeah, that's all the books that I read this month. Honestly, guys, this is leading up to be my biggest month ever. I'm so, so freaking excited. If you guys are proud of me, make sure to leave a like. I've read like 12 books already. 12 books in this amount of time. Like, dang. Um, subscribe for more videos. Hit the notification bell so you get notified and you can come to my videos as soon as possible. Comment what you have read this month. I will discuss with you guys in the comments. Um, I'll see you guys for the next day of Bookmas and the live stream tomorrow. So yeah, I'll see you guys then. Cannot wait to go live with you guys guys and I'll see you guys later. Happy reading! Oh, what the?